Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included here in the Ultimate Base 4.0. In today's episode, I would like to activate the geothermal plant. It is about time that we get some valuable power boost for a thousand or two thousand cycles, depending on how much we actually use it. In the previous episode, we already prepared the room with a vacuum, so this should all be good. And now we are installing the steam turbines. I made the room two tiles smaller right here. So now it actually counts as a power plant room and we will be able to even make this better. Now, one thing I neglected a little bit was crafting ceramic. I should have done that, especially for this room here. So it would be great to eventually get this done. But yeah, in general, we can now work our way down and actually open up some of this stuff. We just need to be careful with the oxalite. I rather get this right now. And then there's some more oxalite here. So I do not want to exchange this tile, for instance. That would have been a mistake. I don't even know. How could I possibly do this without unleashing the oxalite? Before I forget something about the previous episode, I made a rocket platform here on the last planetoid. And this is actually the planetoid where we can get the resin from. So not only tungsten, but also resin. That's actually not too bad of a planetoid. It's just not something I need immediately. Now, this platform here is entombed. Let's see if it still works. It might actually still work. And then I forgot to close this off again. So we'll be leaking a little bit of that precious polluted oxygen. What can I say? The main thing is May and Ari are now coming back. I'm going to be sending Ari to the second planetoid to clean up and get back to his chores. Replace him with another dupe before sending him over to the next planetoid that we want to colonize. But right now I'm really worried about this oxalite. I just don't know how to possibly delete it. It's 193 kilograms as well. So that will be spreading extremely quickly. Well, for now, I guess let's just be aware of it. And I'm going to make my way down here and just dig around the oxalite, making sure we actually don't break through. So something along these lines here. And then at some point, I will just have to deal with it. But I would like to free up some space here at the bottom and start collecting some of this hot material. Man, I really cannot think of a solution how to get rid of that oxalite without accidents. I would release it and then just delete the gases, but the problem is it's too much. It's 193 kilograms. Do you guys have an idea? Let me know. For now, we're just going to make our way through and actually also collect the materials here that we dropped. Some of it is going to be hot, but the hot stuff is really only the abyssalite that we already have a solution for. And all of the other things I'm going to pick up so they don't become hot. You know, what we could maybe try is place a tile here, then dig up this abyssalite and let it evaporate. And then every now and then we just delete the resulting oxygen. Considering we can only have about two kilograms, that means I need to do this uh, almost a hundred times. And I'm not up for that. What if instead we had something like this, then placed a door here that automatically opens and closes. Now, the thing is, I cannot really build this. Yeah. <laughs> ah, guys, you know, there's only one way to deal with this. I think at least I'm going to release the gases towards the top and then I just pump this part out again because this one isn't hot yet. But if I have gases here at the bottom, then it's going to become hot. So instead, I'm just going to add another gas pump here and deal with it that way get rid of it. So this should be closed off again. The gases are going to go through here and just fill up this part. Yeah, I think that is a good idea. We're going to open this up, release the gases, and we're also going to open this one up here. There it goes. <laughs> oh man, filling up everything with oxygen. But yeah, this is probably the best way to deal with it. But still, let me know if you have a better idea. So maybe we could test it out in the future. When it comes to cooling the steam turbines, we're of course going to go with conductive panels. And I'm just going to have one for each steam turbine. And I'm also going to have one for the transformer here. I don't think the power control station needs anything. Let's also already build the pipes. This would be going from the reservoir over through each of the panels. And then at this point, I'm probably just going to have a closed loop and do the same thing for the other side. This means it would be going through an aqua tuner at the bottom. And at some point, it would be coming up here again get a liquid bridge and as a matter of fact we're gonna need that liquid bridge for all of the steam turbines as well or maybe we just combine it into one yeah i think five steam turbines might be perfect because they release 
200 grams of water, right? But then on the other side, it would also be good to distribute the water that's coming back from the steam turbines. So I think I'm going to stick with a shoot for each steam turbine, making sure the bridge doesn't actually overlap into both of the rooms. And then we would be coming down here in order to set up the shoot. But let's not do that right now, at least not for this guy. And then, of course, some shoots like so. We're almost through the oxalite. It will take a while to actually pump out the room again and allow ourselves access to the bottom. Looks like Ari doesn't know where to stand. You're such a little fool. Look at this. Here is the safest spot for you to just hang around at. There's no need for radiation vomiting. Don't be silly. You know, while we're at it, we might want to upgrade the research rocket here, the exploration rocket, by swapping the module here for a large engine uh, space above rocket blocked hmm yeah i guess i need to remove this there it is the second petroleum engine ah oh, this is gonna be so much better we're gonna keep the interior design of the rocket here though we might want to take care of the carbon dioxide hmm yeah we probably need to keep this active for a while there are still lots and lots of tasks to explore for may and i would like to do this with this rocket or maybe we're just gonna use a rappelled engine as soon as i send back ari there's gonna be so much crude oil to actually deal with that we get plenty of petroleum back and then of course with the petroleum boiler it's gonna be even more extreme looks like we got rid of the oxalite this is good now we just need to wait for the pump to get rid of all the resulting oxygen in the meantime we can still build a couple of things we we might even be able to do the same thing on the other side let me see there is the power transformer uh, no let's just keep focusing on one side for now by the way right now all the liquids we're getting from the second planetoid are put right here and i did that because it conveniently dropped down into my previous collection area which it wouldn't do anymore but i think i wanted to change that either way if we go down here Hmm, yeah, that's probably good. So I imagine I would be going straight down here, continue even further in order to eventually dump the water and everything we're getting right there. But then we need to get rid of the petroleum on the way. But how are we going to deal with the overflow? If we have a limited petroleum storage, then we are simply screwed. Also, in due time, we might want a full pipe of petroleum i really want to go all out with the petroleum yeah honestly right now i don't know how to deal with it so i'm just gonna make a little capturing system uh, let me actually do it up here so we're just breaking out here in order to do the normal sensor stuff actually i might want to make sure because i don't want to deal with any petroleum in this pool yeah making sure it means we're going to be using a liquid filter maybe right there make a little detour this is going to be the petroleum and then we hop down here to reach join with the pipe get a little liquid bridge here and a little vent there and all we need is power i think i'm gonna have a heavy watt trim plate here either way i think my rocket is now coming back with rm may let's get ready to close this again there it is a oh, wonderful i totally forgot to re-equip the atmo suits ah oh, geez go back in here oh you still have to clean up your vomit either way very nice. I like where this is going. We're gonna rebuild the interior here. I actually don't need the gas pump anymore because we're gonna get some space with the trailblazing modules that we don't really need anymore. Okay, to make my situation a little bit better here with the kiln, I'm gonna do something that's probably just temporary, but it's still gonna help us out tremendously because we can only input very little amounts of materials, but what we can do, of course, is automate it and just bring along a lot of materials. So this shouldn't be too difficult to automate, and we're gonna put the actual kiln to priority one so the duplicates aren't taking over anymore. Let's see what we get. Maybe we even get something nice to print out. I wonder at this point, Ada, right? Right here would be a wonderful dreamer for instance should we slowly replace our dreamers let me see how many journals we have it fully restored at the moment and i already collected 75 journals yeah i feel like until we get new duplicates i don't necessarily have to run it but it would still be great to collect the journals more frequently and now we are probably out of the pickle when it comes to food since we have the gristleberry farm as a backup yeah, sure. Let's not think about it too much. Ada is like perfect for a dreamer right off the bat. I'm gonna print her out and then we're gonna do all the things. For instance, she's gonna become dreamer four, right? We wanna get her into suit sustainability training. It's the only thing that we really need. Next up, we need to switch the schedule. This is my dreamer schedule here. So dreamer four should be pushed in there. And then of course, when it comes to priorities, we also need to keep that in mind. Well, she basically isn't allowed to do anything. 
anything. Wonderful. I really like where this is going. By now, let me see what we have in here. We have gristle berries, but they are also spiced. And look at that. It's still 0%. So it's not just the, the seafood. Absolutely unbelievable. You can make any food imperishable. In the meantime, the gases around the base are slowly but surely being used up. And it looks like, uh, what do we have? High stress, building in two moon, unreachable food. So Dreamer 4 is not capable of actually getting off this platform. I did not think about that. Hmm, you know what? That could be a slight issue. Let's get that pneumatic door in the joint. Also, before I forget, one of these guys... Wait, do they not have the suit anymore? Like, where's your pajama? Yeah, look at that. The pajamas, they actually die with the duplicates. This is so interesting. Let's uh, print another uh, pajama right here. Dispense item. Amari is doing the good deed. Wonderful. There is the pajamas. Now, I probably want to move that up to the base. So, Dreamer 4 doesn't have to do anything too complicated to get a hold of it. In the meantime, we're getting down to the grams range of this. But, geez, hopefully I'm not going to encounter any more oxalides. And, of course, we now have some more meteor showers. Why the heck not? I guess it was a bad time. Oh, and I should have closed this. Well, it's not really the dangerous version of the meteor showers. Good, for now I'm gonna set the ceramic to infinite and then we want to have some clay in here. Clay actually goes under cultivatable soil. And then of course we also need a little bit of refined carbon under consumable ore right there. And last but not least, oh, we just need some normal coal, right? So let's add that as well. Very good. So now as soon as we got these materials in here, maybe let's also craft some refined carbon. And instead of doing it infinite, I'm gonna limit it to about 90 crafts otherwise i'm gonna forget about it and maybe use up all my coal good it's now time to send ari back to his uh, main planetoid let me see this happen there he is okay he's a little bit hurt but we're just gonna send him over now he's got an additional suit over there that is actually fine but we need to make sure that we replace that so i'm gonna deliver another suit right here and we're also making another suit uh aluminium i like that and now, of course look at all of this we have so many interplanetary payloads and all of them or most of them are filled with a little bit of crude oil that we then can process here and make more petroleum. The petroleum then should be relayed so now that we have a other system here actually let me make sure that this is being dealt with here but all the petroleum and polluted water from the second planetoid is making its way down here into this filter system that we built in the previous episode. I moved it from down below up here so I can have my petroleum pipe going directly into the petroleum line. And then only water, brine, salt water and polluted water is going to continue here into the collection area where we are then going to process it. Wait a second, I used up all my igneous rock again. Are you serious? This goes so quickly sometimes. Yeah, it looks like we are totally out of igneous rock. Let me see what we have here on the second planetoid. 710 tons. Okay. And we also have a little bit here probably on the third planetoid. No, we only have 12 tons on the third planetoid. Hmm. Yeah, I'm guessing we need to get that from other planetoids as well. But this one here, I can fill up with a little bit of igneous rock again to make up for what we're missing. So that should then be delivered over to the first planetoid here. But man, I cannot live without igneous rock. We need it. Here we go. Ari is back on the planetoid and he's first taking care of the critical materials. Apparently, what else are you doing? Yeah, just critical materials. But he's going to be taking care of all of this. It's like tons and tons of petroleum that we can make. Of course, we are losing half of the oil by utilizing the oil refinery. So that is something we want to change in the near future, building a petroleum boiler here. I want a rather large one or maybe even two petroleum boilers on either side. And then this minor volcano is hopefully going to provide some more of the heat that we need it's the only volcano that we have on here so the output is most likely going to be limited in the end but yeah back at the main planetoid we can almost continue here with our endeavors there's just a little bit of oxygen left before we can continue in the previous episode i also received a tip that we could use diamond window tiles right up here they are virtually indestructible now i don't know what that exactly means because if they are even slightly indestructible then i don't want to have them so i think to test this out i'm just gonna put a diamond window tile up here and if that actually functions and it doesn't get destroyed maybe we're gonna do five in a row so there's more likelihood that it actually gets hit 
I think until this is pumped out, I'm gonna take my time to sweep everything up. These are still the cold materials, but everything we dig up here at the bottom could potentially be hot. Especially the abyssalite. We already have a system for the abyssalite. Let me see if that is still intact. Is this... No, it's set to sweep only. Well, actually, that's fine. Whenever I sweep up the abyssalite, it's gonna be brought over here. We can still pick up the abyssalite, but at least the hot stuff is gonna be out of the way. And then if you remember in one of the previous episodes, we also set up a conveyor loader this one here is for all the other hot materials so in our case that would be the obsidian but there might be other stuff we find down here that is actually hot let me see is it just obsidian yeah actually we might be lucky here it's really only the obsidian and the abyssalite that is hot nice okay now this is actually working great because it can just continuously do its thing and it will also be you know fairly cool because of my cooling loop speaking of cooling loop now that we have a little bit more aluminium wow already 21 tons the volcanoes are just absolutely insane but yeah my point was that we can now go ahead and actually set up some more of these aluminium pipes one two three empty and then three pipes aluminium just upgrading the efficiency of the cooling system a little bit there's my petroleum making its way to the first planetoid. I still have to wait for Ari to catch up a little bit and then he's gonna bring along the igneous rock as well. This is unbelievable. Look at that. He can actually carry like 10 of these guys. He's a beast. Look at what he's carrying. Even some mealwood seeds, pinch up pepper seeds, crude oil, iron ore. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, just bring this along here. With Ari, it's actually very noticeable whenever the dreamer contraption isn't running. And there comes my igneous rock. Okay, nice. We're taking that. These are now all materials being shipped in from the second planetoid and they're coming along here. This reminds me, we probably want a more permanent solution for our payload opener. And I was wondering, why not do this somewhat automatically? If we have a beacon, maybe yeah, somewhere in this region, we could potentially go down here one block with these bunker tiles and set up a system here to actually automate this process. I'm still currently bringing all the gases that we have, the extra gases down here in this region. And what we can see here, I'm still crushing everything. At least two kilograms of polluted oxygen. Like right now we have three kilograms in here. So that means with every crushing of the door, we're getting rid of six kilograms. This is extremely efficient. I was also thinking about maybe utilizing this little space here as our main natural gas storage. This could be an absolutely amazing opportunity since everything is closed off. Well, I guess we would still have to close this off. Maybe we're gonna do this. Yeah, I'm actually really interested in making this my natural gas storage. Yeah, right now this is going through the center here, but we could release it on the way and then pump it up again. So we don't actually need this buffer, which is already full. You know, right now I'm not using my natural gas to its fullest extent. So I think I'm actually gonna start working on that. Uh, just deconstruct the transit tube here and we're gonna make a crossing and finalize this room. Oh no, there's the cable as well. Uh, that's gonna bite me in the butt. I guess in the future, if ever, I would want to lead my power through the transit tube access points. That means it would have to go through here eventually, and then we hook this up and that up. That means I should now be able to put my transit tube point right there, close this off with a metal tile, and then we should hopefully still be golden. And there we go. No, I did not manage to complete it yet. So I guess right now we're lacking the power. It's just this system. It's not even that dramatic. Maybe I could have uh, completely eradicated this wire here and come up from the bottom. Yeah, this might have been better. Just going up here and then do our usual spiel. Well, that means we don't even have to connect it to the upper portion. We already have a wire going through here. But I guess we'll see. Right now, I'm just going to keep both cables in place. Hold the phone. I already prepared a connection here. What the heck am I doing? This is uh, way better. This is going to be... Yeah, this is so much better. Petroleum incoming. Well, let's not forget to connect this pipe here. And then I can get rid of the lower portion because we already pumped everything up. Well, not necessarily. There's still petroleum here at the bottom. By the way, I would like to mop this up. So it will be brought over to their corresponding locations. And now this is actually also an enclosed space right here together with the interior of the liquid pool. I'm gonna allow the system to crush a couple more gases before we then start to introduce the natural gas. 
In the late game, I don't think we're ever going to run into issues when it comes to water production. Right now, I feel like we could utilize this a little bit better since the water is coming in at a very cold temperature right now with the polluted water guys here. What we could do is maybe introduce some of the steam. Like right now, we're crushing a lot of steam every time we close this mechanized airlock. Well, we're also crushing the CO2 mainly, but you know, instead of crushing the steam, we could just go ahead and pump it over. So why not have another pump here? Let's say in this region and i'm not sure is there ever gonna be some carbon dioxide yeah there could be carbon dioxide coming down here so we are not completely safe the question is would we mind the carbon dioxide would just be sitting here and then we could eliminate it in a different way or maybe i'm gonna change that in the future but we can use normal granite pipes to get in here and then if i release it right here it should condense pretty much immediately so i just want to make sure i'm using something nice insulating here maybe a ceramic pipe and then we're gonna release it with a high gas pressure vent and this is just a system to function for the near future maybe in the end game i don't necessarily need that anymore because of all the other liquid sources that we have access to but it might generally be a good idea to take advantage of the excess water that we're producing from consuming the natural gas for instance but of course we should also introduce a atmo sensor in order to make sure we are only enabling the pump when we do have enough steam Good. looks like we're down to micrograms now with the extraction of the oxygen but geez that took uh, way longer than i thought i just wish these pumps would be slightly more efficient the thinner the gases get i mean it does make sense and we could have another pump here on the other side to make it faster but still i kind of find this an unnecessary game mechanism to make it more realistic just pump this stuff out don't make me wait for such a long time now when it comes to power transformers this transformer here is probably gonna be powering up the aqua tuner but then we could also take this to the next level and maybe power up some of the volcanoes this guy here is using a maximum of 240 watts like the pump we can ignore that one and if we bring this up and power this guy here and this guy here as well then we are only using what 700 and something that means we can probably do one aqua tuner for 1200 watts and then the three volcanoes here with just one power transformer and it could be this one here so i'm really interested in actually figuring that out let me see if we can go down here maybe hop over this cable and then join with this guy right there and then we can just go ahead and continue whoop 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 yeah of course continue the cable and we do something along these lines kind of like where this is going also looks like we're finally done here pumping up the liquids and mopping everything up that means i can retire the system here as well and holy cow i'm actually really glad i'm able to do it i'm gonna set my sensor here to above 15 kilograms so every time we have more than 50 kilograms of steam in here then the gas pump is gonna deliver the steam over to our liquid room also maybe another something i would like to introduce are liquid reservoirs inside of my water storage just so that we can have more potential water i guess so i think what i'm gonna do is just fill this up what are we using gold yeah that's fine and then we can use the pump to go through all of these liquid reservoirs and only in the end we can make it go somewhere else but maybe we should leave enough room for another pump on the other side in case we ever need more water yeah let me just get rid of the outer two reservoirs and then i'm gonna be bringing this in here like so and we're just gonna daisy chain them and this way even if we run out of power or something else catastrophic happens with our pump we still have all of these reservoirs ready to go this would then be connected up to the top even after all this time the freaking room is still not empty out of uh, this just I don't know i just find this one of the most stupid mechanisms like why does it have to take so long just be a game and allow me to do things a little bit quicker just my humble opinion but i think for that reason i'm actually not gonna continue with this in this episode i've been waiting for this moment for like 40 minutes now it took over 40 minutes i don't even know what cycle did we start at at the beginning oh well i think we still made some progress you know because we couldn't work on this one we were actually taking care of other things which is also fine you know always make these little improvements 
to make the situation better for us. Well, looks like we are having some troubles here. Uh, polluted oxygen. How is this happening again? Wait a second. Yeah, for some reason we had some polluted water coming in here. Uh, I don't know. But the last two reservoirs are being built and then we should be able to go back to normal business. Looks like my system can run again and we were actually now utilizing this part here where I shut it off and only enable it if it doesn't have enough power. Very nice. Okay, in the next episode I think I'm going to be focusing on the geothermal plant and also the gas storage. It would be really great to get this going. I don't think we're going to be taking much longer to actually crash all of these gases. Yeah, so really looking forward to the next episode already. With that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.